Welcome to the topic of biopsychology. This topic builds on the biological approach covered in the approaches topic, which you've not seen before, you'll find linked in the description below. In this topic of biopsychology, we're going to explore the divisions of the nervous system, the function of the endocrine system, including glands and hormones, the fight or flight response, including the role of adrenaline, the structure and function of neurons, synaptic transmission, localization of function in the brain, hemispheric lateralization in the brain, including split brain research, brain plasticity and functional recovery, ways of studying the brain, including postmortems, EEGs, ERPs and fMRIs, and finally, biological rhythms, including circadian, infradian and ultradian rhythms. I know from years of experience that for many students, the moment they hear the word biopsychology and the parts of the topic that we're going to explore, they have a bit of a panic and the thought crosses their mind that I can't do this. This is going to be so hard. The topic of biopsychology isn't any more difficult than any of the other topics in the course, but only if you really take to heart what I'm about to say. The biopsychology topic contains a lot of key terminology, which you may not have come across before, but if you understand these key words and can put them into simple language, it will make your understanding of the topic far easier, and I'm going to do my best to help simplify these key terms and make them memorable for you. At the end of the video, there'll be some retrieval practice of what we cover in this video so that you can check your understanding. And finally, you'll also find link below a free worksheet that goes with this video that you can fill in as you watch it to help structure your notes. Let's dive in. When was the last time you went on a roller coaster? Ever been to Alton Towers and ridden the Oblivion? What happens when you're in the queue for a ride like this? How do you feel? What's your body doing? And after an hour's wait, it's finally your turn. Then when the harness comes down and locks you in your seat, you know there's no way out now. The ride starts to slowly crawl up and up, and you reach a height that's so high above the whole park, and you can see for miles. And then you get to the edge of the drop, and it stops. You hang. Then... During all of this, your body was picking up information from your external environment, monitoring what your body was doing and responding accordingly. In this video, we're firstly going to explore the nervous system so that you understand the structure of the nervous system and the role of each part of the nervous system. Then secondly, we will explore the function of the endocrine system. Then thirdly, we will see how both of these two systems work together in the fight or flight response. So First, let's talk about the nervous system. It's a complex network of nerve cells that carry messages to and from the brain and spinal cord to different parts of the body, and so helps all the parts of the body to communicate with each other. Your nervous system detects information via its senses about what's going on out in the world around us, and also what's going on inside our own body, and then it activates the body to respond. So here's the structure of your nervous system. Your nervous system can be broken down into two main parts, the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is called the central nervous system partly because it's in the center of your body. It's made up of your brain and spinal cord. Then there is the peripheral nervous system. The word peripheral means on the edge or the outer part. The peripheral nervous system is where nerve cells carry information to or from the central nervous system. As we just saw, the central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. The spinal cord is connected to the brain and sends information to the brain from the outer parts of the body, the peripheral nervous system, and sends signals from the brain out to the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system can be further split up into two parts. The somatic nervous system, this is responsible for conscious perception, conscious meaning what we're aware of, and it's also responsible for voluntary movement of skeletal muscles. The somatic nervous system has sensory and motor neurons. 
it receives sensory information from the outside world and sends this to the brain and in turn sends a signal to the muscles, the motor neurons, to bring about action. And there's also the autonomic nervous system. This is responsible for involuntary control of the body, including reflex movement of skeletal muscles and maintaining organ function, for example breathing, heart rate and stress responses. You don't have to think about breathing, the autonomic nervous system does it for you. The autonomic nervous system does not have any sensory neurons, but only motor neurons to bring about action. More about sensory and motor neurons in the next video. Additionally, the autonomic nervous system can be further split into two parts. There's the sympathetic nervous system. This is also known as the fight or flight response, preparing the body for action. And the parasympathetic nervous system, also known as the rest and digest response, leading the body into a calm state. We'll come back to these two shortly. In addition to the work of the nervous system, the endocrine system is involved through a network of glands through the body that manufacture and secrete chemical messengers known as hormones. So instead of using nerves to transmit information like the nervous system, the endocrine system instructs glands to release hormones directly into the bloodstream. These hormones affect any cell in the body that has a receptor for that hormone. It acts much more slowly than the nervous system, but has very widespread and powerful effects. So the function of the endocrine system is to provide a chemical system of communication via the bloodstream and to secrete the hormones which are required to regulate many bodily functions. So meet Eddie, Eddie the endocrine system. Let's consider five of his glands, the hormones they release and the effect they have on his body. Firstly the pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland is a small pea-sized gland located at the base of your brain below your hypothalamus. The pituitary gland is sometimes called the master gland of the endocrine system because it controls the functions of many of the other glands. The pituitary gland makes certain hormones including oxytocin. In women oxytocin is involved during childbirth by sending signals to their uterus to contract. It also influences bonding between the mother and her baby during breastfeeding. Secondly, the pineal gland is also found in the brain and produces the hormone melatonin. Melatonin helps regulate our sleep and synchronizes our sleep-wake cycle with night and day. As your melatonin levels increase, your body temperature and blood pressure drop, preparing your body for sleep. Moving away from the brain, there is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland produces the hormone thyroxine. Thyroxine controls how much energy your body uses, called the metabolic rate. It's also involved in digestion, how your heart works, as well as brain development. When the thyroid gland does not make enough thyroxine, many of the body's functions slow down. The adrenal glands, near the kidneys, produce the hormone adrenaline, which stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and brings about the fight and flight responses. Finally, the testes are two male reproductive glands that produce sperm and the hormone testosterone. This hormone causes the development of male characteristics such as growth of facial hair and deepening of the voice. Higher levels of testosterone are also associated with aggression. So finally, let's explore how these two systems, the nervous system and the endocrine system, work together in the fight or flight response, which includes the role of adrenaline. Let's come back to our roller coaster situation. Starting with the central nervous system, which is the brain, when we perceive a stressor in the cue for the oblivion, A part of the brain triggers activity in the peripheral nervous system, specifically in the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system changes from its normal resting state, the parasympathetic state, to the physiologically aroused sympathetic state. This activates the fight or flight response. Now we come to the endocrine system. The adrenal gland releases the hormone adrenaline into the bloodstream. Adrenaline causes a number of changes in the body, including increased heart rate, increased breathing rate, digestion is inhibited, saliva production is inhibited, that's why you may have a dry mouth after the ride, your pupils dilate and you start sweating. All of this happens in an instant as soon as the threat is detected. 
This is an automatic reaction in the body. You don't have to tell your body to do this. Now, what happens when you get off the ride and you know it's over? Relief, joy, and you have the ridiculous idea to do it all again. Once the stressor has passed, the parasympathetic nervous system returns the body to its resting state. It's referred to as the rest and digest response. It acts as a break and reduces the changes in the body that were activated by the sympathetic nervous system. Heart rate and breathing rate slow down and digestion and saliva production are activated. And theme parks know this. That's why when you get off a roller coaster, they are selling you large fizzy drinks at ridiculously high prices. They know you'll be thirsty after the ride. The parasympathetic nervous system works in opposition to the sympathetic nervous system. Its actions are antagonistic to the sympathetic nervous system. So here's a diagram you may find helpful that summarizes what we've just covered about the fight or flight response with the involvement of both the nervous system and the endocrine system. So well done, that's the first section of the biopsychology topic. Now it's time to check your understanding of what we've covered. Never be afraid to test yourself. It's one of the key paths to learning. I'm going to present one question at a time and you can pause the video to answer it yourself first and then press play again to reveal the answer. Next in the topic of biopsychology, you need to understand all about neurons and how the body communicates with itself both electrically and chemically. To watch that, you can click the video on the screen now or link below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.